Hello everyone and welcome to Hoovy's Plymouth Prowler. Now, as some of you may know, I do a lot of photography for Tyler Hoover for his various listings on auction websites all over the internet, mostly cars and bids, which is what I'm currently doing with this one. But when he asked me if I would take pictures, he also said, why don't you make a video of it? Why don't I? Now the problem is, what do I make a video about? And what I settled on was a single question. What is this? Now, by that, me and my incredibly messy hair don't mean like the specs of this car. I'm not even going to bore you with the specifications. If you want those, go check out the wiki article. I'd probably just get all the facts wrong anyway. What I actually mean is, in its heart and soul, what is the intent with this car? Here's my theory. There's a lot of cars you can get that are noun out of the box. The Hellcat, that is a drag racer out of the box. The Miata, that is a track car out of the box. The Aston Martin is a luxury grand tour out of the box and a BMW is a toxic personality right out of the box. And here's what I think this car is. The Plymouth Prowler is a show car right out of the box. Having grown up in the Wichita area, I am absolutely no stranger to hot rods and old muscle cars. Of course, we have the Starburn Devlin Car Show here all the time, home of Starburn Customs. The cars that this takes inspiration from are relatively commonplace around here, so it was no surprise that when this came out, well, I don't remember it. I was like two years old at the time. But needless to say, I do remember that my grandpa was very, very excited about this, talking about it still as late as 2003, which is as far back as I can really remember this. I'm young, you remember. The bad back might have fooled you. But nevertheless, this is a styling icon designed by Chip Foose, probably his best work, potentially his only good work. This is actually something that I rather like a lot. The mere fact that a production car could be this close and this wild compared to its concept makes this such a big W in my book. Is this how you do a W? I don't know what the kids do. I'm probably looking like I'm throwing up gang signs in front of this nationally historically registered Vickers gas station, which I suppose isn't too far from the truth. Probably just really look like a schizophrenic. But despite its iconic appearance, there is one very important thing to keep in mind. This is not a hot rod. nor is it a sports car. Don't let the low slung looks and the lack of a roof give you any thoughts of the S2000 or the Mazda Miata. This is definitely neither of those. The way this drives is uh, confused, as am I. But there is one thing that I'm certain about and we'll get to that later. Out of respect for Hoovy's detail, or I'm not gonna suction cup this thing to the window. Luckily it's an automatic, so it's pretty easy for me to just hold it here while I drive and you guys can ride along with me in this very interesting car. Now I've heard some people describe this as a boulevard cruiser. And sitting down in here, I can see how you'd think that. These are the plushest seats. They are cushions. This is a lazy boy on wheels. As far as the seat is concerned, the suspension is absolutely rock hard, <laughs> which does lead to, um, I wouldn't say crisp handling, but very flat handling, which is nice. I guess, but it does kind of mean that it adds to that confused nature. Doesn't quite know what it wants to be. Oh, am I comfy or am I sporty? Is it fast? Let's find out. Eh, fast isn't the word I'd use. It is quick, it'll get where you want to go. It's definitely not slow and it makes a great noise. That exhaust that's on here is absolutely superb, but it is not a tire roasting monster. And I'm sure that a part of that is due to the absolutely massive rear wheels and tires on here. That is a lot of inertia to get going all at once. Oh my gosh, I think I'm gonna get a heat stroke out here. The seats are very comfortable, but overall I kind of get the feeling that I am an infant in a bathtub I am only five foot six, and the sides of this car are very, very high. I can see absolutely nothing out in front of the dashboard. Honestly, I kind of think that's a little bit of an ergonomic miss on their part. You've got all of that hood and those awesome open wheels, but you can't see them. And it's, uh, that's kind of a shame. I want to see, I want to see all that cool stuff. Now, of course, Hoovy was very adamant that I use the auto stick mode. 
so here we are manually shifting. Oh! <laughs> Man, that transmission tune just bangs those gears. <laughs> and we've got a little bit of a turn coming up here. Let's see what uh let's see what it's like around the bends. Oh, the Chevy Spark is gonna pansy their way around it. But just a little bit, we can get a little feel for how it corners. Corners very flat, actually. Uh, Turning's pretty nice. I'm sure that when you push it to the limit, you know, it's not amazing, but why would you do that in this? This is for uh, cruising around, looking good, and being seen. Let's whip it into this corner here. Yeah! That's not bad. That's pretty good. I definitely do see a little bit of the uh, PT Cruiser DNA in here. You know, it's sort of like every Chrysler product of its age. And it's kind of funny how this and the PT Cruiser were more or less made at the same time. Two very, very different takes on the uh, retro car thing. Now, one of my favorite things that both of those cars had was body color accents in the interior. That is one of my favorite features in any vehicle. The, the Volkswagen New Beetle had it. Uh, the PT Cruisers had it on some certain editions. NC Miatas had that on some certain editions. It's so neat to be reminded of the color of your vehicle when you're sitting in it. You know, in case you forget, because you might. But as I cruise this massive ode to the 30s back over to Tyler's house, I realized that on my way there, I could stop by and uh, share this experience with someone. So I'm going to do that real quick. So you guys had a lot of uh, a lot of the you know old 50s and 60s cars, right? Uh, Grandma had a Farman Kia. Dad had the Sprite. Granddad inherited a four old Ford pickup truck from Grandpa Mason. It was a farm truck. like a piano hinge? Exactly, yep. That's amazing. I was hoping that you could try and help me figure out what kind of car this is. Because I'm kind of stuck on that. Is it a cruiser? Is it a sports car? Is it just kind of a, a show car? You know, something just made to look good and absolutely nothing else? Or is it like a statement of wealth? Flashy like a Lamborghini? Race car, maybe? I would say the first two. A Sportster and a Cruiser. So sort of a hybrid of a, a cru sporty sporty Cruiser, kind of? Yeah. Something to be... Uh, Spruce. Spruiser. Spruiser? All right, I'll send that one into the Webster Dictionary immediately. <laughs> oh, look, a BMW i3. Oh, we had a Chrysler LHS, didn't we? We did have an LHS. That's this, a this, car. this has the same engine, I believe. A okay. 3.5 liter V6. It's basically identical. <laughs> a little different sound. Yeah, this has a really nice exhaust on it. And it, uh, it really bumped up the power too. I think this is, this is not my turn. Well, actually, it was. This thing. Oh yeah, it was. One. How about that? All right, there we were. A little spin in a Plymouth Prowler. <laughs> well, I think she enjoyed that. Man. That is a good sound. A lot of people don't like V6s. I am not one of them. I love the sound of a good twin cam V6. Let's get these windows up. It is a lovely thing to just cruise through the countryside in. I'm smelling all the freshly cut grass and whatnot. Quite nice. Very pleasant, especially now that the uh, temperature is starting to cool down. I could jive with this. Might take a detour and just uh, head to Oklahoma or something. I don't have to go back to Tyler's. He doesn't use this. He's selling it. Better that I use it. One little on-ramp here to give the handling a little test again. Decreasing radius ramp. Oh, oh wow, oh wow. That is actually quite a lot of lateral grip. And uh, not a lot of holding from the seats. Man, that turns. That's pretty good. Yeah, and you can just hear that V6 as you come out of it. <laughs> oh man, and that is the thing about this car. Is it super comfy? No. Is it super fast? No. Is it the sharpest, nimblest, best handling thing you've ever driven? 
But it looks amazing and I absolutely cannot help but smile when I'm driving it. And this car was a swan song of the Plymouth brand. Was This was like their last great flagship before the brand just ceased to exist. And really, I think they could have done worse. Thanks for watching.